Hey, everybody. My name is Aaron Shane. Welcome to Habitat Now. It's a true honor to have you join me on this beautiful Saturday. It's getting close to summer. It's spring. My kids are out of school. You're all busy, and I'm honored to have you all join me today as we visit with Trina Weintraub, who has an exclusive show at the gallery uh, we'll talk about in a second. And I'm honored to have you join me, Trina, today. I'm looking at you, but you can't tell. So I'm going to take over your screen real quick and just give you a little bit of a review of uh, what's going on? We still do these Zooms every single Saturday. If I can get content together, which has been a lot of fun. Trina and I put this together not too long ago, and we're, I'm grateful for her making this happen to give you guys a glimpse into her incredible installation space. NGG continues every single Saturday. I believe we have one of the most impressive female pipe workers. Um, her name is, uh, uh, it'll come to me in a second. It'll come to me in a second. Uh, Lacey Walton, who is like a second generation female uh, artist who will be joining us. And I'm extremely honored to have her. We'll talk more about that soon. The uh, show opened. It's open now. People are coming in constantly to see the space. It is an incredible exhibition. We had, everybody was here. We had Lucio, we had Davide, artist yes. Thurman Statham showed up. And Dan Clayman just happened to appear at Corey's party. I mean, everybody was in town. These Nick, 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 Nick Mountain in the background, some new artists I didn't even know, but it was a fantastic event, and we're honored to have so many great people in our Habitat family. And they're all incredible and just beyond talented, great, great uh, people and personalities overall. And, uh, you know, we're trying to figure out next year's time. It'll be probably back in April. Mark Pizer showed up. Can't, can't not take a selfie with Mark. Got to do that uh, every time I see him. But it was the same picture again. Artists from the, from the longtime family members and new artists who were here. It was just a blast. And the, the exhibition was incredible. I did a walk around to look for my big old face on YouTube <laughs> and click this to see to see uh, the walk around I did last week uh, at the last second and got it up and running. We toured the show. The space is just incredible. We've been making sales. People are acquiring pieces for their collections. New collectors, too, which is very exciting. So we have the Kelly O'Dell Raven Sky River exhibition that's now moved into the gallery upstairs, as well as the Blown Away experience is now in the vault uh, as well. But we're here to talk about uh, Trina, and we're honored to have you. Unmute yourself, Trina. You're talking to nobody right now. So I have a, a couple of P Trina's pieces in my own personal collection. I'm a big fan of her. We've been showing you, I think, for a while now, since like 2016. Hey. Yeah, I think like 2016 or 17. Yeah, we showed your work for the first time and we've been loving it ever since. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so you can take over and say hi to everybody. Boom. All right. Let me do a quick takeover and share my screen. That'll be great. So uh, we called out to Trina not too long before the show started and said, hey, we have this great space. And we've been watching her on social media make these wonderful lifelike. We'll call them animals and, uh, <laughs> and creatures. <laughs> creatures, right? I hate the R word. So overall, we went to say, hey, Trina, can you create something for the space? And she asked us some questions. We got back to her. She asked more questions. We got back to her. And so she <laughs> made something incredible happen. And you got to come see it. But uh, Trina, I'll let you take it away. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. And especially thank you for inviting me to set up in the gallery. Having a full space to just kind of have my way with is pretty amazing. So thank you again for that. So just to reintroduce myself, my name is Trina Urata Weintraub, but everyone calls me Trina. You guys are welcome to call me Trina as well. A few years ago, I made my Instagram and social media and my website as well, just Trina Katerina, because I wasn't sure like which of my names to use. And it's funny, sometimes when I meet new people and they know my work, they call me both names. They're just like, hey, you're Trina Katerina. So I'll answer to either, both, whatever. But Trina is what everyone else calls me. Hi. <laughs> So the show title is Sweet Scenes and Amusing Things, as you guys know. And it's pretty difficult, actually, to come up with a title for artwork, never mind an entire show. So I started thinking about it the minute Corey and Aaron invited me to show there. And I ended up coming up with this title because after I had made some work, it just made sense because this is literally and exactly what I'm showing. A collection of sweet, both literally sweet and figuratively sweet scenes or moments and some fun amusing objects. So let's start with the sweet scenes, which are a collection of flamework glass mice and rats caught in the act. And I know you don't love rats, or at least most people don't, but I'm hoping you guys will like these ones. 
Oh. So when you first walk into the space, the first thing you're going to see is the big installation in the center. Because when they said recreate or just kind of have an experience in the space, of course, I wanted to do an installation. So this one is titled Must Come Down. And it's mm -hmm. actually the sister piece to another piece that's titled What Goes Up, which I'll show you guys in just a minute. Um, so this one consists of eight blown glass balloons in different shades of pink and eight flame worked glass mice. Each one of the mice interacts with a balloon or the ribbon of a balloon in a different and unique way. Like this little guy who's holding onto the ribbon, like looking up at the balloon floating away. Or some of them are hanging by their tails or waiting on the ground for their friends to fall or descend slowly down to them. And I really had fun sculpting them in a lot of different dynamic positions, especially the one where the tail wraps around the ribbon that was like my most favorite position there's like maybe two or three of the mice in the in the show that do that so i chose a few different shades of pink for the balloons because i really wanted like a soft gentle welcoming color for it i didn't want it to feel overwhelming i want it to be like comfy and sweet and what's like a sweeter color than pink it's like the most sweet color i think anyway so this is the original piece this one is what goes up, and this one actually was acquired by the Imagine Museum, which you mentioned earlier, and I'm sure everyone knows about by now because it has a pretty amazing collection. So it's pretty awesome that they own this one. And this one was made in 2018. And it was a way for me to explore and like revisit and reimagine, <clears throat> excuse me, the memory of losing my pet mice when I was a little girl, which is kind of like a, you know, a life lesson. But recently I've been wanting to use the mice as fun characters to like spread joy rather than something so heavy, a little bit more lighthearted, fun, and maybe at times kind of silly. Like this piece, this is Tastiest Heist. And it's like just catching the mice raiding the candy jars. So this- Everything in there is you made, I wanna make a point. <laughs> Everything in there, she handmade. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And anyone who had mice as either pets or pests, you know that where if you have them as pets, you need to get more than one. And if you have them as pests, you know that if you see one, there's definitely more. So I generally try to have these scenes have like overwhelming amount of mice or have a lot going on in the small space. And you can imagine if it was spread out bigger, there would be a lot more. Mm -hmm. Another thing you know about mice, if you ever encounter them, is it's nearly impossible actually no definitely is impossible to get them to hold still for even a second so i like to be able to kind of freeze that moment so you have a time to really enjoy them and all their cuteness i think they're cute anyway. <laughs> i also try to show the relationships with the mice between each other because they are super social creatures and they have connections within like their community and their family together but also if you have them as pets they connect with you too I love the ears. That's one of my favorite parts. <laughs> and another thing about mice is if there are mice around, there's mouse poop around. <laughs> so any of the pieces that have three or more mice, I'll generally include a little piece of poop. Don't worry, it's also glass. It's mm -hmm. not real. <laughs> um, I'll generally hide it, though, so it's not like the first thing you see. I don't want it to gross you out, but I do like that it's a fun little discovery that if you spend time with the piece a little bit more, you might be able to find it. So if you see a piece from me and there's three or more mice, take a closer look. You might find one of these little things here. Oh, and just so you know, there are, I'm going to look at my numbers here, 338 marshmallows, 76 gumballs, and 18 gumdrops in this mm. piece, all of them glass. Wow. Yeah. I was, was, I was, I was off. Was a lot. Was off. <laughs> it was a lot. I did do like an Instagram giveaway game for people to guess how many marshmallows were in there, and no one guessed right. <laughs> they got one person got kind of close, but no one guessed right. Um, so I also included four single mice in the show. I totally understand that larger sculptures and especially installations are something that's hard to afford or some are hard to own to have the space to have put everything in. So I like to make pieces that are a bit more accessible, both price wise and size wise, so that people are able to own and enjoy them. And each one of these comes on its own fused glass base and in a custom box that I had designed which I think just kind of makes it like a whole fun experience when you get the piece. 
And this is Candy Crush 3. These little guys definitely lucked out when they found this broken, crushed up lollipop on the ground to munch on. The lollipops are actually the most challenging part of this to make. So my favorite detail about the lollipops is the lollipop stick, which is obviously glass, it's all glass, to not just have it adhere directly to the surface of the candy part of the lollipop, I actually really carefully drilled a hole that fit the stick perfectly so that the stick slips inside just like it would be in a real lollipop. Even if it's opaque, I would still do that just so you get that interaction between the two parts is, um, looks like the real thing. And the crushed up one, I actually just made one and crushed it with a hammer and it is modeled off of a real lollipop that I also crushed with a hammer. And you can see on the stick that is from the broken lollipop, it has those tiny little shards stuck to it. I actually very carefully picked up all the tiny little shards and adhered them on there with the torch. Hmm. And this is one of my favorite ones from the show, The Sweetest Dreams. It's pretty special to me. So when I had pet mice, I love, love, love watching them, especially when they were sleeping, because it's the only time you can see them when they're not dashing around super fast. So it's the only time I could get a minute to like look at their feet and their anatomy and just enjoy them without them dashing around so quickly. The original idea for this piece was actually to have a couple mice playing with the, the sugar and kind of making a mess of it, which I probably will still do. But my husband, we were talking about this idea and he was like, well, what if it fell asleep in the sugar? And I just fell in love with that idea and had to do it. So here he is. And the sugar bowl is all flame work glass. I made it on the lathe and the sugar is also glass. So it's not sugar. I'll call it sugar, but it's not sugar. Looks like it though, right? Mm -hmm. This is spilt beans. It's all flame work glass, of course, as always, or at least glass anyway. And with this one, I when I had these jelly beans around in my studio, I had to have big signs, most of the candy, but especially the jelly beans. I had to have a big sign on my desk that was like, do not touch or eat anything that's on this desk here. It's kind of this unspoken rule in the studio that you don't eat any candy that's just left out, which you probably shouldn't do anyway. But if you did it in my studio, you might break a tooth. <laughs> So with this one, I was aiming for the mice to feel like they were not only interacting with each other, but also interacting with you, the viewer. So this little guy, if you were looking at the piece, I try to position him so he's looking up at you, so you have a relationship with him too. And this little guy, I said Scrappy one with that little cut in his ear, which was a happy accident that I love so much and I hope to recreate again. And in this shot, you can actually really see the details of the little toenails. And I try really hard to make them as lifelike as I can, but I also want to stylize things a little bit. And with this one, I like, well, with all of them, actually, I'll make sure that the eyes and the nails remain shiny when I sandblast and give a matte soft finish to the rest of it. I'm sure you guys want to know how many jelly beans are in here. <laughs> there are 256 jelly beans. Wow. And to give a shout out to Tessa Tar and Alex, my studio assistants, for all their help because they did make some of these but they made the majority of them i had a little contest going of who could make the most jelly beans That's smart <laughs> i haven't handed out their prizes yet but they'll get them <laughs> jelly beans real ones <laughs> well they had as many of those as they could want <laughs> they just couldn't mix them up with the glass ones <laughs> right and this one is a collaboration with robert mickelson i'm sure you guys are familiar with his work this is algernon's dilemma and it was actually really fun to work on it was the first time I had made a mouse that was hanging by its tail. So it really kind of set off that whole idea of having them hanging from the ribbons and stuff. And these mice and the hand are a little bit bigger than lifelike because when he sent the hand to me, I opened it and it was so big and awesome, but I wanted to like scale up the mice too, just to kind of match the scale of the hand. And if you guys haven't read the book, um, Flowers for Algernon, I'm sure most of you have, it's a really popular book. It's a great one. Um, and this is a, it was the inspiration for this piece. So a little process, before I sculpt the mouse, I will sketch, draw, study, print out reference images. I often will also sculpt a clay model in the position that I want. I kind of use like oil-based clay so I can sculpt and re-sculpt it as I'm working. Sometimes I just want to like have an arm up or a certain leg in a different position so I can keep playing with it and move it around as I'm working. 
it definitely helps a lot for me to get, especially the more dynamic positions correct. Because if I have like the anatomy kind of wrong, then the whole thing just doesn't look right. And here you can see where I'm making the details and I'm using a really tiny torch. I call it the baby torch. It's technically called a Smith torch. And you can get a very, very small flame here. And that's how I get all those really tiny details like the toenails and the eyes and stuff like that. And I also use it for assembly. Hmm. And now on to the rats. I know very familiar that many people are scared of rats and hate rats and think that they're disgusting. I totally get that. So things sometimes people look at rats and they think of them as just large mice, but they're not. They're so different and sculpting them and my approach to like designing what I'm going to make with them is different as well. With these, I wanted to show all of you like the beautiful side of them, like the curve of their back or the taper of their tail. So I hope you guys see the beauty in that. <laughs> I haven't lifted one of these up. Are these hollow? Yep, they're okay. all hollow. Mm -hmm. Lots of so, compliments in the in the chat, by the way. Oh, good. <laughs> I chose to display them on the wall like decorations, but in a pair, because I find that if there's a relationship between them, then it makes it easier for us to relate to them. And maybe we'll make it so they're a little less scary to those that are scared of them. And I think that using the pink color for the shelves in the background also, again, brings in that like sweetness and the pretty kind of side of it. And the process for the rats is, of course, very similar. I make models, I do extensive note taking. And here you can see a little bit of my notes on how to make the hind feet, which I did probably eight different methods until I've kind of settled on the ones that I do now. And I bet you the next time I get to making rats, I'll probably switch it up and do these notes all over again. And this is just how the process goes years and years. My notebooks just have so many notes on how to make specific parts to things. And here you can see I'm attaching the tail, which is the very last step besides any cold working or sandblasting that would need to do before it goes in the kiln. So I'm using a hand torch here on a little turntable. I actually was invited to do a demonstration at the International Flame Working Conference a few months ago where I got to demonstrate and share my process of the wrap making. Um, which was actually really fun. A little nerve wracking because there was a lot of people there, but it was really fun in the end. All right, so now on to the amusing things. I've been calling this whole series of work display things. They're like playful, fun glass sculptures that you really want to play with, but mo probably shouldn't because, you know, glass is fragile. <laughs> you don't want to hand it to your kids or play with it yourself. So first up are these vending machine capsules. So I'm sure you guys remember these from like, or have seen them even the other day. I see them every time I exit the grocery store or the laundromat, um, except now they're not a quarter anymore. They're maybe 50, 75 cents, maybe even a dollar sometimes. But I have memories of begging for a quarter every time so that I could get a bouncy ball or a sticky hand, which I of course immediately lost. And I do plan on making some of the other toys. Oftentimes when I have these in my studio, they're such a conversation starter. When I have them on display there, people always come in and tell me of the toys that they wanted and the ones that they always got with the quarters they begged for from their mom or dad. Um, but for me, it was the sticky hand and the bouncy balls, but there's you know temporary tattoos and the rings and those like silly teeth and there's all kinds of fun Giant things. There's all the gumballs that were stale. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You might break your teeth on it. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> um, so you definitely can't lose these ones like I did lose the other ones. These are all four times bigger than the real one. And they're blown glass and fused glass. And this is Confrontation. It has two cat's glass hands and I would say are two very recognizable hand positions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and three fragile finger monsters. That's what I call these little monsters when I make them out of glass. I wanted to use the power of like the monsters and the, like the silliness of a toy to cancel out the, the confrontation or like the like neutralize the situation that was happening between these two people. And here's just a little close up of the monsters. Actually, when I'm working on them, um, make up funny names for them. Like this red one is uh, Mr. Lots of Arms. I don't know. 
they come up with funny names as I'm working on them. Um, this was one of my big COVID projects when we all had so much time on our hands. I went down a deep rabbit hole just figuring out little things like how to get the teeth so pointy. And I use a Dremel and I actually grind every single one in individually. It's kind of crazy. I don't know if it was like a healthy obsession, but I'm happy with the outcome. <laughs> So here's the hands even without the monsters, I think is a really cool piece too. Um, this is a set and actually there's a few other colors available too for Habitat Limited, where I just wanted to make like a fun kind of toy experience. These also come in a custom box. You get that whole experience of getting like a fun new toy and opening the whole thing up. And I have stickers like Aaron had um, that come with it as well. And this is one of my studio assistants, Tessa. She's the model for um, confrontation, obviously. And I think what I like about sharing some of these process pictures for you guys is you can see that we're just like, we're having so much fun we're doing this and it is like a ton of work and it's really messy and it can be backbreaking at times, but there's a lot of like joy and giggles that happen when we're making these pieces. And I really, I really hope that some of that energy and vibe gets infiltrated in the piece and you guys feel that too. And here's some of the process shots or the elements of the monsters before they get put together. You can see that every single element is really, I take the time to sculpt the details into every part before I assemble it. And then I make sure if any of the detail melts out I make sure to get all of that right back in there. I mean, this is like what I'm looking at when I'm flame working. It's like, how could I not <laughs> giggle <laughs> when I'm making these? So these are one of my most favorite things to make because I'm just giggling the whole time. And this is the last piece I'm going to show you guys. This is Stay. I made this one a few years ago, but it was like shown right, right before COVID. So it was shown once and then kind of forgotten about for a bit because we were all locked up. But I'm happy to have it out on display again because it's one of my most favorite pieces that I've ever made. It's um, I've done a few other marionette puppets. They're a bit larger and they're of deer. I don't know if you guys have seen those ones before. Um, so I wanted to make new ones like that in that same vein, in that same style, but I wanted to do a different animal, but I loved the, like the lankiness and elegance of deer. So I was like racking my brain thinking about like what, what animal I could do. And this is my modeled after my sister's dog, Stella, which is a little Italian greyhound. And she's even the same color as a deer. So every time I would go see her, I'm like, she's just like a little deer. And what was awesome about it is I could really study her. I didn't have to like look up pictures or anatomy or look at skeletons. I could just go over my sister's house with my model and I did make clay models of everything. And I took a million pictures of this little dog who was so patient with me. Um, and I would just sculpt the pieces and parts after her directly. And all the parts and elements move like a marionette and you could definitely move and repose or play with them. You could put on a puppet show, but I don't recommend putting on a puppet show because they are made of solid cast glass. That's actually all I have for you guys. So thank you That's again, Aaron, for inviting me. <laughs> thank you, Trina, so much. Go ahead and stop sharing your screen. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like, subscribe, hit this bell. We do these talks every week. You can actually join us live on the Habitat website if you click on the Zoom button on top anytime during the week usually has the links there. I posted in the chat room and uh, Trina's NGG presentation from the past. You have a chance to see that. If you haven't seen it in the past, you can click that or go to YouTube and just search for Trina Weintraub NGG and check it out. Thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you, Trina, for being here. Come and see the show. Come and see Trina's exhibition. Experience these little creatures live. Commission her. She makes some amazing works for your home. Take the entire top of your bedroom and fill it with mice and she'll make it happen with candy and fun stuff and they'll they'll leave you alone i promise they're not real but thank you guys for joining me today have a great weekend thank you. if you have any questions contact me or trina anytime be well thank everybody you. bye bye